put that on the list. Uh, whatever you do, roll call. Mayor Steam. Present. Council Member Large Anderson. Here. Council Member Enright. Present. King. Present. Austin. Present. Helly. Present. Hagen. Present. Fisher. Present. We have a quorum, Your Honor. Thank you. Item one is a motion for adoption of the agenda plus modification. We need a motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed. Item number two is a motion approving the minutes from October 16th. Need a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Item number three under awards and recognitions. Chief, you have a new officer. I'll go back. We, were, we met him at the swearing in today. Yes, thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, this is Tyler Freeman, our newest hire. Uh, he is the fourth officer that we've hired. Uh, we hired three last month on the 10th of October. Tyler comes to us from St. Paul Park, and he was most recently working as a community service officer for the community of Edina. So we welcome Tyler to the fold, and this will take us up to our total allotment of 34 sworn officers. So once uh, these four new officers uh, get through the field training officer program, which should be January, February, we'll be fully staffed. Okay, Tyler, we're happy to have you here. If you want to take a minute and tell, you, tell us how happy you are to be here. You <laughs> Otherwise, why don't you go down by duty and just... <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. No, I mean the agenda because somebody would have given one. Negligent in their duty. Okay, so much for awards and recognitions. Tyler, we're glad you're here. I'm sure you're you're joining a, a brotherhood, a family, and you know what it is if you work for up, up in the city for a while. But uh, we have an excellent police department, and I think you'll be a good addition to it. So, Thank you. welcome. Item number four, we need a motion for the consent agenda. No moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Under petitions and requests, five is a motion authorizing the fire chief to sign a commitment for the replacement of fire engine 302 in 2017 with a payment in 2018. Chief, tell us what's going on. Mayor Council, it's just a request to purchase the engine uh, this year to save the uh, increase from taking effect. Um, next year, so it's a money-saving uh, idea. Great. Council, anything? Nope. That we need a motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Wait a minute. All in favor? Come on, Aye. guys. Aye. 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 Okay. Yes. Opposed? Item number six is a motion approving or denying the renovation of 708 8th Avenue Southeast, the Steichen property. Ms. Wallace. Uh, after I came up with that motion, I realized that there's probably a few more options here, but you've... Uh, been presented with this uh, item at the last council uh, last work session meeting um, it's regarding properties at 708 8th Avenue Southeast and 1300 9th Avenue Southwest um, both properties were scheduled for demolition under our hazardous building uh, removal uh, program the um, properties two of the properties were forfeited to the state for non-payment of taxes and were sold at auction by Maurer County on September 29th 2017 the two properties were purchased by one buyer. Um, the buyer um, did come to our work session meeting and um, felt that these properties could be renovated. Um, he made some um, suggestions as to how that could be done um, in order to make sure that the property was uh, repaired um, with a specific schedule. Um, and that would provide some security what should the property uh, be renovated. The, uh, the property owner, um, after the work session meeting, um, didn't get back to me for uh, some time. I did then contact him. He um, initially said he was gonna give up on both properties and just let both of them be demoed um, and then just further discussion about what the uh, liability to him might be. Um, there would be some assessments on the property. Um, he thought maybe he might look again at renovating the 708 8th Avenue Southeast property. Um, he did say we should go ahead and remove the 1300 9th Avenue Southwest property. So 
again, spoke to him. Uh, he was going to get back to me uh, early last week. I didn't hear from him. Um, I did contact him again um, the day that we submitted our memos uh, to council, um, and he again said that he um, had talked to a bank in town, local bank, and had arranged for uh, approval of uh, twenty-five dollars to $30,000 to put into an escrow. Um, he did talk about his, uh, his belief that he could make those uh, repairs. Um, we didn't actually hammer out a timeline at that point, um, but I did recommend that um, any repairs be done within 180 days, which would be six months. Um, should the council decide to allow the renovation to move forward um, and that the escrow should be used to complete or demo the project if uh, if that is not taken care of within the 180 day period um, he again I just wanted to note that you know he's he's saying that he can fix this property or repair the property for thirty to forty thousand um, dollars and then talking to my staff and looking at uh, this 708 property really needs everything. It needs everything. You've seen the pictures. It needs, uh, you know, roof, possibly foundation, um, exterior work. All the interior work needs to be done. It doesn't have a kitchen, bathroom, anything like that. Um, we really thought that it might be double what the buyer estimated, but that would be based on hiring the work done, and it's entirely possible that he has, you know, other options that might make it more affordable for him. Um, he did, uh, the council at the last meeting asked to have some properties um, that he owns in town uh, for comparison just to see, he, you know, he's indicated that he'll make these, you know, the nicest or make this the nicest property on the block and um, he did have uh, two properties that he provided to me and then I looked up a third and those are in your materials. Um, is there anything else that you have questions about or would like further information? We had some expenses into that house or, or into some of them already and what, what are we doing about that? Are, are we recovering those costs? Do we have some like asbestos removal or something? He indicated that he wasn't going to ask the city for any handouts. So no, no, but we at had this already point, spent money on them, hadn't we? Right, so at this point we have not done any assessments. We've past the period in the year where we normally do the assessments and we haven't completed the project so once we complete the project and complete have a complete uh, itemization of the costs that we put into the property so once typically once the demolition is completed we would provide that to the court and then the court would get an order um, or provide an order for us to assess those costs of the property no no i'm not talking about the demolition he's trying to Re, to keep one of them and, and, and fix it up, right? Right, so the asbestos removal that we've already done, right. we would typically assess that to the property, so that would go on his taxes if he did not pay the bill directly. And that would be understood by him before any of this stuff went through, obviously. I have yeah, spoken to him many times about it. Okay. So the, the 880182 on 708, and then the anticipated with demolition on 1300 of almost 14,000, he's on the hook for that, correct? He could be, I mean, he could come back at that assessment hearing, you know, and Chandler. ask the council to lower it sure. potentially, but but yes, that is okay. my understanding. Okay. Just so he's aware of that too, I guess. Yep. Is the, uh, whether or not the foundation is faulty, need, is, a, is that a factor or is he checking that out? How do we ascertain that? Because it seems to me that if that's if we're starting with you know, the foundation and everything else, including electrical and plumbing and all that, he's taking a huge risk. Yeah. I mean, it's it's possible that it may cost double what he's estimating. And he's um, on the hook for that. It, I mean, we, if it's six if, months, if he can't get the financing to complete it, if he doesn't have the money to complete it, then it to the point where it's habitable or you know where we are allowing it to be rented or right. lived in yeah. um, you know that would be his risk it, potentially he might fail to complete it and that's why we would ask for the security and the escrow to be able to, to either complete it ourselves or demo the project if it's not well, he must feel the foundations are okay or he'd be starting from scratch yeah. well I don't think he knows we looked at our, our my staff looked at it and felt that there should be some engineering 
done on the foundation. Okay. Right, I, I guess like he said though, I mean, if he's willing to take that risk of, I mean, if we demo these properties, nothing's ever gonna get built on them again. Oh. And the one, 1300 probably isn't that bad because, I mean, of where it's located, but this property, the 708, I mean, it's just gonna sit as green space in a neighborhood forever. So I guess if he's willing to take that risk, I guess I'm willing to let him take it, so. And I noticed his office is right next door to the 1300. It's, it's yeah. Spent it's been a lot of time yeah. over so there. So would we, if he doesn't complete it in 180 days and it continues to drag on, do we have any recourse? The any only recourse contract? we would have is the, um, um, the if we, I guess continue we currently have an order and the order would be good throughout this time period um, I guess the ultimate question is you know so so the property owner when we start this process can either repair it or we will remove it okay. if it's not you know if they look at the cost versus you know the cost to repair versus the cost to take it down you know there's everything's fixable right like the guy said at our last meeting but there's some point at which it's not worth the investment so nobody will pay the amount that it would take to repair it in order to keep it standing did we find out if he could get his money back my understanding is that there's some state statute that does not allow the <coughs> county to uh, uh, what do you want to say uh, withdraw the the purchase once it's been made but I think <laughs> the circumstances where they didn't tell him we were demolishing it might have an effect on that but yeah, and we've clarified with them that that should be included on the sheets that they provide to the buyers from in the future if we have the same situation uh, occur. I mean, it often happens that during the hazardous structure process that the property could forfeit because people stop paying taxes on it once it loses value, I guess. I'm inclined, as Mr. Austin is, to give Mike a chance at rehabbing this structure. I trust him. He's a, a seems like a reputable person, reputable businessman. He knows what he's doing, I would think. And we get the escrow as, as a safety net, so I'm willing to make the motion that we allow them to the 180 days to rehab 708 8th Ave Southeast. Could you also add to um, <clears throat> to move forward with the demolition of the other property? And then we demolish this at 9th? Uh, 1300. 9th Street? 9th, 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 9th Avenue, Avenue Southwest. Avenue property to demolish that as, as it was ordered. I'd second that motion. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Moving on. Number seven is approving labor con. Is that where I'm at? Yes. Yep. Number seven is approving labor contracts with UAW Local 867. Trish. Good evening, Mayor and Council. <clears throat> Before you tonight is the approval of the three UAW labor agreements for the terms 2017 through 2019. Um, there are three separate ones. Uh, there would be a resolution for each of the park and recreation, mm -hmm. the street and sewer, and the wastewater treatment plant group. Um, the terms of the of the uh, agreement are outlined in, to you in the, in the attached memo. Also included with the approval and the motion would be um, a c several memorandum of understandings. Um, three of them for each of the groups would be for retroactivity for some of the financial pieces to January 1, 2017. Um, there would be one additional one for the wastewater treatment plant for um, some work uh, conditions, work hours, and then one, another one for the park and recreation for um, some of how we pay a, a, a temporary park supervisor in lieu or when the, te uh, the park supervisor is absent, so. Council, any questions? questions? If not, we need a resolution for 7A. So moved. Second. It's an anchor. Councilmember Enright. Aye. King. Aye. Austin. Aye. Helly. Aye. Hagen. Aye. Fisher. Aye. Councilmember Large Anderson. Aye. Resolution passes 7 0. You're on. We also need a resolution for 7B. So move the resolution. Second. 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 Huh? Council Member Enright. Aye. King. Aye. Austin. Aye. Helly. Aye. Hagen. Aye. Fisher. Aye. Council Member Large Anderson. Aye. Resolution passes 7 0. And I also, we also need a resolution for 7 C. So move the resolution. 
Is there a second? Second. Mr. Zanker? Council Member Enright. Aye. King. Aye. Austin. Aye. Helly. Aye. Hagen. Aye. Fisher. Aye. Council Member Large Anderson. Aye. Resolution passes 7 0, Your Honor. Thank you. Eight is resolution designating polling places for the 2018 election. Ms. Cable. Yes, tomorrow is election day. We have nothing here on our ballot. Um, there are some other cities in Minnesota that do have races, but we're already preparing for the 2018 election. Um, the legislature passed a law that we have to set our polling places by December 31st. Um, so I have a resolution there setting the polling places for next year, and none of the polling places have changed since the last election. Okay, council, anything? So at the last election, there was some concern, I believe, at Southgate. Yes. And I assume all those concerns have been Yep, addressed. we've met with the school district. We might move around in the actual building, and they talked about maybe doing half a day and, uh, you know, those types of things. Those details are being ironed out, but we do still have use of the facility. We've confirmed that with them. Great. Anybody else? If not, we need a resolution. So move the resolution. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Danker. Councilmember Enright. Aye. King. Aye. Austin. Aye. Helly. Aye. Hagen. Aye. Fisher. Aye. Councilmember at Large Anderson. Aye. Resolution passes 7 0, Your Honor. We need a resolution for accepting donations to the city. So moved. Second. Mr. Baker. Councilmember Enright. Aye. King. Aye. Austin. Aye. Helly. Aye. Hagen. Aye. Fisher. Aye. Councilmember Large Anderson. Aye. Resolution passes 7 0, Your Honor. Thank you. 7 is resolution authorizing closing out revolving loan fund 23,000 and transferring to the state of Minnesota general fund and port authority. Huh? Actually, I have to go back to number 10, 10. authorizing the charge off of the Lumalite oh. loan, um, which is within that fund 23,000. Back in 2012, the city of Austin loaned Illuminate $100,000 to start producing illuminated signage that came out of a revolving loan fund, dollars we had actually accumulated in the 80s from loans to other businesses that the state gave us the money. As the money is repaid back, we could loan it out to other businesses. Um, we've had very few uh, collections or payments from the entity. In fact, in April of 2014, we modified the loan agreement um, and as of December 31st of 16, we have a receivable balance of just over $94,000 and over 12,000 of accrued interest. They are no longer in the former Robinson building. The owner of that building um, kicked them out of the facility for lack of lease payments. Um, we actually have no real mailing address for the entities. We have a personal guarantee from one of the owners that uh, Mr. By Craig Byram has looked at through the attorney's office. We're going to try to see what uh, possible assets we can go after to attach um, to this repayment. But in all intents and purposes, our search so far is uh, listed. There's not a whole lot there to go back on. But uh, the auditors are going to want us to actually charge the loan off if it's uncollectible. And I'd say at this point in time, it's very uncollectible. Questions? If not, we need a motion for 10. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, 11 is resolution closing out revolving loan 23,000 for and transfers to the state of Minnesota General Fund and Port Authority. Budget amendment number four, Tom. Now uh, that we've charged off the Illumilite loan, the only thing left in that fund now is cash. Uh, since the Eagles Club paid off their uh, loan they had with us back uh, late October, early November. With that being said, in 2017, the legislative session, the state statutes were changed that would allow us a one-time exception uh, that would allow us to, if council so desired, to take 20% of that cash balance and remit it back to the state of Minnesota then they'd allow you to retain the other 80% for any purpose you see fit. You have to do some reporting to the state, but it would not have to be tied to any uh, job qualifications or any requirements that are currently on the state monies. So that being said, I've discussed this with City Administrator Clark, and we'd like to go through the process to remit 20% of that balance back to the state. And right now, the balance is preliminary at just over 327000 So we'd remit 20% of that back to the state of Minnesota, the other 80% we would retain. And what would we do with that 80%? Uh, Mr. Clark, through Budget Amendment 4, has requested 50 grand to be transferred to the general fund, and that would be used to help fund some um, architect uh, work for uh, apartment complex. The remaining 80% would be transferred to the Austin Port Authority that would be used for um, 
economic development purposes, and then Fund 23,000 would be closed out. There'd be no dollars left there in a revolving loan fund. With that being said, that's what we'd request for Budget Amendment Number 4 if Council is in agreement with that. Any questions? That we need a resolution. So move the resolution. For a second. Second. Mr. Danker. Council Member Enright. Aye. King. Aye. Austin. Aye. Helly. Aye. Hagen. Aye. Fisher. Aye. Council Member Large Anderson. Aye. Resolution passes 7 0, Your Honor. Thank you. So I have a motion authorizing the city recorder to sign a waiver stating the city does not waive the statutory tort limits. This has to be yours, Tom. We are in the process of our property liability insurance way, insurance uh, for the 2018 year. Um, going through the documentation with the League of Minnesota Cities, who's our insurance agent. On an annual basis, they require us to pass uh, a motion on our liability coverage. Again, we've always recommended and requested council to not waive the monetary limits. That limits the amount by state statute, which any, in, any individual or group of individuals could um, sue the city of Austin for. Again, there are some things outside of that limit that, um, that can be exceeded, but at this point in time, we'd request council authorize us to not waive the statutory tort limits. Council, any questions? If not, we need a motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 13 is resolution approving change order number four to the city hall remodel project. Tom. This is change order number four, the final one to keep the project. We actually closed it out a while ago, but have been working with the architects and the contractor to um, do the final change orders. Um, there are four items within change order number four. Deduct for additional sprinkler work of $1,133, some additional ceiling tile, additional bathroom hinges and TV installation, and a reduction for some paint door, painting of doors. With that being said, we'd like council to approve change order number four, which would be the final one for City Hall, in the amount of $316 deduct. Council? If there's nothing, we need a resolution. So moved. moved. Second. Mr. Danker? Council Member Enright. Aye. King. Aye. Austin. Aye. Helly. Aye. Hagen. Aye. Fisher. Aye. Council Member Large Anderson. Aye. Resolution passes 7 0, Your Honor. <laughs> Thank you. Excuse me. 14 is a resolution in support of bonding funding for KSMQ. Craig. Uh, Mayor Members, Eric Olson, President and CEO of KSMQ, has requested the city consider Exhibit 1 a resolution in support of KSMQ and the requested state bonding funds from the state of Minnesota. Similar to our Fourth Avenue and Ramsey Mill Pond area request, these, res uh, these applications require a resolution of support for those state funds. Uh, KSMQ is asking us to be the fiscal agent for the state bond proceeds as well as the eventual landlord of the facility, which we would enter a long-term lease. This would be similar to what was done with the Hormel Institute and the Port <coughs> Authority. Further, the resolution identifies the city would be willing to provide a site for the location. Obviously, this could entail some f financial costs for the city. Uh, several options exist for limited costs. Others could be more of something that we would work through with KSMQ as they move forward, finding a suitable site for their transmission of signal and the like. Um, current fiscal considerations with the city, as you know, on the horizon um, are a concern to staff. Um, with the acquisition, as we mentioned, there would be some cost implications, uh, but surely this would warrant further discussion with the city council. At this point, we'd request council action to approve the resolution in support of KSMQ state bonding request. Okay. Any questions? If not, where, yeah. where are we going to find the money to, I mean, the way I read this, I mean, this puts us on the hook for finding them a place to, to be and pay for it, basically. Um, and uh, do we have the funds to do that? Well, from my, if I can jump in a little bit, from my understanding, there's a couple of different sites that are being looked at. One of them the city owns right now, we could do it at no cost. Would that be correct? Yeah, it's a, actually, the Port Authority owns the property, but I'm sure working with the Port Authority, um, there should be, I think, some interest there in entertaining that. We also have other property. Um, there's a couple options that the Port Authority has under their control. Um, there's other opportunities, and um, 
I mean, at this point, the resolution doesn't uh, lock us in on those. It simply states that we would explore those options and work towards that goal. Um, obviously, cost is important in that equation and something that we'd have to work through um, as we move forward. The first step, though, would be to get the state bond funds and then um, you know, analyze those options, but certainly something council wants to be aware of, that there is some exposure there. So we as a council would, you know, we could, we'd have to okay the site and also I think there's been a commitment by several, several others as far as buildings and stuff, Craig, I don't know if we can talk about that. But yeah, the KSMQ has secured um, some other funding sources. I'm not sure Mr. Olson's here if he'd like to comment on it, but this time um, the obligation for them would be to obtain those additional funds uh, for their project to move forward. Eric, you want to step up to sure. the podium, please? Can so you tell us, what can you tell us about the project? Sure. Uh, Eric Olson, KSMQ President and CEO. About two years ago, our board uh, entered into a strategic planning process, and they identified facility and space location as negatives as far as KSMQ and their viewing area. As you know, we serve 22 counties in southeastern Minnesota, northeastern it's Iowa. Right Correct. And it's also, uh, it would, a new facility would help give us better visibility and also be much more efficient for creating more content. We call, it's a media center. We want to be much more open and accessible to, you know, the Austin community and doing more town hall programs, that kind of thing. And uh, so we went about the process of identifying uh, host cities and went through that process and we were very uh, pleased to, in our early uh, work in a capital campaign. We're in kind of a quiet period now, but we received some good uh, feedback from the community. And so this that you're considering tonight, it, it allows us, it gives us permission to seek funds from the state. And there's been a precedent set. There are five public TV stations in Minnesota like ours, 501c3s. And in the last three budget cycles statewide, there's been funding provided for building for uh, as assets through a city uh, fiscal agent arrangement such as this one. So we're hoping for long-term stability for the asset, which is uh, the broadcast license. I believe Mr. King's on your board, aren't you, Steve? Yeah. So he could, maybe if we, I'm sure we'll have to discuss this further at a work session at some point, but we're just, this is just a go-ahead step more right. or less. So, so the 2.9 would be just what you would use to basically renovate and remodel and move out of Riverland. It wouldn't be for any acquisition of property. That's correct. That's correct. So the city would be on the hook for providing a suitable location and paying for it. Uh, or that's are, not or are there funds in place for that? I mean, has KSMQ done any fundraising for that? We, like I said, we've we were starting a capital campaign, but it's been in the quiet phase now. But I've received good assurances that uh, uh, there will be opportunity sites in Austin so that we can stay here. Um, and it's my understanding we've identified several potential sites, mm -hmm. at least one of which the city owns and could do this at little or no cost whatsoever. Correct. And it's up to the company. And why is it that you need to move out of Riverland? A uh, couple of years ago, our board uh, started a strategic plan process and identified that our location was not uh, up to standard for broadcast today. We've been there since 1972. And we just can't, it's not as efficient to do programs. Uh, nothing wrong with Riverland. It's just uh, stuck in the back and, uh, and we could do a lot more programming that way. Any more questions? I, I think also with K, to KSMQ's favor, there's been some good growth out there. And, and with KWL really basically leaving and going to Rochester, I think this is an asset I'd hate to lose. And I think visibility is important and, and the uh, the infrastructure out at Riverland, inclu including the, the visibility, just isn't there for somebody that wants to grow. I know talking to Eric, he wants to really be part of the community a little bit more, uh, and some of that would be the location uh, specific that would allow them to be more more visible in the community <coughs> to 
again to continue the growth and I, th I just think it's a tremendous asset uh, Eric he can't say a lot right now but yes he's right the the, uh, the community support is there uh, and and uh, what we're doing tonight is just to help him get to the next step I'd have to say too I think once the state bonding number comes through and it's, and it's got a million at the end the community support and resources tend to follow that so I think the decision we face at that point will be quite a bit different than it looks now Anybody else? If not, we need a resolution. So move the resolution. Sir, second. Second. Mr. Danker. Councilmember Enright. Aye. King. Aye. Austin. I guess not knowing the, the what we're on the hook for, I appreciate KSMQ and I wish them that they get this bonding money, but if it puts the city on the hook for several hundred thousands of dollars that I don't know where it's going to come from, I have to vote no at this time. Helly. Aye. Hagen. I uh, kind of concur with uh, my colleague there, and um, I, I think we need to have more meat on the table before we can make a good decision on something that's going to cost some six million dollars or more. So I'd have to say no. Fisher. Aye. Councilmember Large Anderson. Aye. Resolution passes 5 2, Your Honor. Thank you. 15 is a resolution approving your contract for the the design of a multi-family housing project, correct? Thank you, Mayor. Members, as part of the 2017 Council Goals related to economic development, the Council identified the following tasks related to housing. Housing continues to be a leading challenge to business growth. As a result, Council will build upon our other economic development incentives, efforts, and establish a similar structure for multi-family housing development, with, which would include pre-design in next year's budget of a facility adjacent to Cedar River that would that will visually represent the intended goals while providing an outline of a financial assistance package to bring a private project forward um, with the previous item on the council agenda our funding source has been uh, sped up a little bit that we had intended to fund this with in 2018 so we're seeking uh, authorization to move forward uh, in advance of what we would wait for uh, otherwise after the beginning of the year included in the packet is an exhibit <clears throat> from RSP architects that would outline a working group to design and come up with associated costs for a multifamily 40 unit housing complex the deliverables would also develop floor plans provide exterior elevations and produce 3d renderings so as to demonstrate the two perspective tenants and developers uh, the type of facility that we'd be looking to advance um, Council action is requested to approve the advanced budgetary approval and authorize the professional services contract with RSP Architects. Not to exceed 30000 right? That's correct. Okay. I, I do have a comment on, on the resolution. It, at, at one line, it does say recommends awarding the contract to SEH. I just saw that. That's my typo. I will change it. Okay. Thank you. So Any this more? is more or less to give possible developer an idea of what we're looking for right as well as um, you know outlining the cost so what kind of fit and finish we'd like to see in the facility so that it takes away the uncertainty you know it, um, part of the goal was to essentially be able to you know, sort of have a project sort of plug and play with a prospective developer so it wasn't just hey we'd like you to do a project in Austin but have something a little bit more concrete from which to work from so that they have a clear indication of what kind of units we'd like to see and position in the marketplace. Could they use this document then to go ahead and build from? Yes. Yep. It would be a several step as Mr. Dankert indicated in the previous uh, council agenda item. We have budgeted 50000 so this, this would take us a, a bit down the road but yes would uh, allow us to continue down that road and if necessary proceed forward with schematic design and then um, have it done to that level. Thank you. Any more questions or comments? This is essentially a demonstration project so that we can have something that demonstrates Correct. housing would be successful. Correct. Yeah, the biggest challenge I think, I mean we have a lot of housing challenges obviously, but uh, market rate housing for apartments has really been non-existent for decades as far as the fully rate market units are concerned and you know demonstrating the market and proving up and then having that housing continuum from 
affordable to more market rate units if we sort of take the cap off the top of the housing market in town that would also allow people to move through the housing continuum as well so a healthy environment really uh, necessitates having some development at all levels would our next step then be to send it out for bids to see for the completion of this project um, I think the hope if we have uh, prospective developers would be to hand the football off to them at that point and then also we'd also be looking at what potential uh, incentive packages that we would pa partner with them and move a project from so it design to completion so it would not be a bidding situation not necessarily right anybody else if not we need a resolution for 15 approving or denying it says approving do we have a motion I make the motion to approve is there a second? Second. Mr. Dankert. Councilmember Enright. Aye. King. Aye. Austin. Aye. Helly. Aye. Hagen. Aye. Fisher. Aye. Councilmember Large Anderson. Aye. Resolution passes 7 0, Your Honor. Thank you. 16 is a resolution trans transferring property to the Austin Port Authority. Craig. Thank you, Mayor. Members, uh, the Austin Port Authority met at its October 25th meeting and considered. The purchase of property along 14th Street Northeast. Uh, this is bound by uh, uh, Austin Utilities to the north and uh, Quick Trip to the south. Uh, this property was previously owned by Kenny O'Leary and subsequently sold to Steve and Diane Persinger. Um, as part of that discussion, uh, the Port Authority <coughs> agreed to purchase over 27 acres of that uh, property for commercial development. <coughs> As an, another part of that transaction, uh, Mr. Persing was also interested in city-owned property uh, to the north of the aforementioned property in Exhibit 1. Uh, this property is contiguous to his property and contiguous to the property that the Port Authority is interested in uh, purchasing. Um, for tax purposes, the attorney felt it was best to put the property into one entity's hand, so the suggestion is to transfer the city-owned property to the Port Authority. Um, as part of the agreement, the city would receive $60,000 for the sale of this property. Other conditions would be that the property um, would be detached from the city of Austin co city corporate limits, and then the Port Authority's condition in their purchase would also be conditioned on the an annexation of that property within to the city of Austin. Um, the recreational trail that's in that property would continue. Um, there's also uh, uh, would be an ongoing conservation easement uh, in the property for the for the trees in that area so it would remain a wooded area. Uh, city charter requires a five vote supermajority for the city council to um, sell the property or transfer the property to the Port Authority. Um, city and city council action is requested to approve the resolution and transfer the city owned property outlined in exhibit one to the Port Authority for proceeds of $60,000. This is really a perfect fit for an industrial park. Good for us to keep everything that's there now. Council, comments? If not, we need a resolution for 16. So we'll move. move. There's a second. Second. Mr. Dankert. Council Member Enright. Aye. King. Aye. Austin. Aye. Helly. Aye. Hagen. Aye. Fisher. Aye. Council Member Large Anderson. Aye. Resolution passes 5070, zero, zero, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, 17 is a resolution approving a traffic study on 4th Avenue Northeast. Stephen? Yes, as part of the uh, downtown rec center project, we're looking at a traffic and pedestrian stu uh, study right out here in front of City Hall on 4th Avenue. It would evaluate uh, traffic movements, uh, existing traffic movements, along with projected traffic and pedestrian movements uh, with the proposed rec center project. Um, the things that could be included as a result of this traffic study, they would look at options for uh, controlling the intersection here at 4th Street and 4th Avenue. They would also look at uh, maybe possibly pedestrian bump outs, um, look at on-street parking and whether or not that should be limited as part of the project. Uh, they, as outlined in uh, the three proposals that we received, SEH, uh, which is the one that we'll be recommending tonight, they also propose doing some 
traffic evaluation down at Main Street and 4th Avenue and also at the current Y to try to get um, pedestrian and vehicle counts at the existing YMCA. Uh, felt that their evaluation or their report that they submitted was very um, complete. So we would recommend um, moving this project forward a little bit ahead of uh, the budgeting cycle and in that uh, this information will be used for further designs that are already getting started as part of the rec center. Um, uh, start part of the rec center design will incorporate information that we receive from this traffic study. So that's why we want to move it ahead, uh, move it forward a little bit ahead of uh, the budgeting in 2018. So if you, uh, we would recommend again SEH in the amount of $9,800 to complete the traffic study. Council, anything? Not we need a resolution. So move the resolution. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Danker. Council Member Enright. Aye. King. Aye. Austin. Aye. Helly. Aye. Hagen. Aye. Fisher. Aye. Council Member at Large Anderson. Aye. Resolution passes 7 0, Your Honor. Thank you. 18 is a resolution approving a trail easement on 8th Drive Northeast with Hormel Foods. Stephen. Yes, the trail easement would be uh, to complete a section from the Hormel Institute to Hormel R&D, uh, right across from International Paper. The, this trail easement is needed because of existing utilities and um, terrain in the area. Hormel has agreed to the easement and, and uh, completed the necessary signatures, and I bring it to Council tonight for your approval. Uh, the project includes a Hormel Foundation grant that would pay for the materials for the trail construction, uh, and then the work would be completed by city staff. Questions, comments? Not we need a resolution. So move the resolution. Second. Second? Right okay. Uh, Tom, I'm sorry. Council Member Enright. Aye. King. Aye. Austin. Aye. Helly. Aye. Hagen. Aye. Fisher. Aye. Councilmember Large Anderson. Aye. Resolution passes 7 0, Your Honor. Thank you. And 19 is a series of motions granting the Planning and Zoning Department the power to contract for the removal of junk and or illegally stored vehicles at the following locations. A 901 Second Avenue Northeast of Craft Property. We need a motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? B, 904 7th Avenue Northeast, the Chavez, Montana, Montana pop property, need a motion? So, so moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? C, 601 8th Street Northeast, the Rath property, need a motion? So, so moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And finally, D, 1208 2nd Avenue Northeast, the Perez Gonzalez property, need a motion? So, so moved. moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, it's our last item. Anybody here want to address the council on anything tonight before we close? If not, reports and recommendations. Anybody have a report or a recommendation? Raise your hand. Anna? I just have a short one. Uh, Paint the Town Pink planning is in progress, and there will also there'll be a link on the city website, or you can go to the Hormel Institute website and click on Paint the Town Pink if you're interested in planning uh, an event or a project that would support Paint the Town Pink, and just a reminder that all the money raised for these projects go directly to research. And we are not having a um, work session tonight because many, probably about half the council is heading over to a symposium, I believe it is, on uh, child, care. child care over at the Homo House, so we won't have a work session. So we need a book oh, correct. Uh, just real quick, Mayor, Austin, Bemidji, Owatonna, Waconia, and Walker were recognized as finalists in the Minnesota Monthly Inaugural Best Minnesota Town Contest. Right. There'll be a party on November 30th uh, to announce the winning town. Uh, two tickets are afforded to the City of Austin representatives. Um, if you're interested in participating in that and helping us out, being a representative, if you could let me know, it's sure appreciated. And thank uh, Nancy Schnabel for... Uh, her great efforts in leading the campaign for that as well. Where's it at? Uh, it's up in Minneapolis. Okay. With that, we need a motion to adjourn until Monday, November 20th. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, sorry. See you in two weeks.